Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Salome here. Uh, it's still New Year in my uh, house because we love the Christmas tree that we've decorated. Uh, I know that uh, I'm late in giving you my best, worst and in-between list, but uh, as you know, I'm a huge film lover and I want to watch as many films as I can before I conclude uh, and give you my list. I wanted to include films this year that uh, are not particularly the best or the worst, but fall into in-between categories. Most of the films I watch, to be honest, uh, mostly fall into the in-between category and they are a good one-time watch and they don't particularly leave a groundbreaking impression on me. Uh, I could include lots of films in this category, but I decided to include films that are leaning more towards the better films than the worst films. The first film which I um, saw at the cinema and um, I didn't particularly enjoy it, but there were good elements in it, is um, Don't Worry Darling. Uh, well, I may be biased to include this uh, film in uh, the in-between films because uh, for many people it can be a very bad film and I understand why but I just could not include the film that Florence Pugh is so good in uh, into the worst films. So I'm including this film just for you to enjoy Florence Pugh's um, acting uh, and um, yeah, mm, no other reason to be honest because the film was not new um, there was nothing fresh in that, it was something I have already seen. Next film that uh, you might enjoy for uh, one time watching and then you can forget about it is Benches of Einishman. Honestly, I don't really know why this film got so much attention uh, apart from the acting. The actors are great and you can uh, watch this film uh, for the reason to enjoy uh, the amazing landscape of um, Ireland and also enjoy the acting. Uh, other than that, the whole experience of the film for me is very flat and very dull. And uh, the third film um, is Cause Away. Well, I included this film because I didn't particularly enjoy uh, the acting of um, Jennifer Lawrence in this film. I think she's quite mediocre. And I honestly think that she's also a mediocre actress or actor. Mm, so I don't see oh, a lot of fascination about her. Uh, however, uh, I included this um, film in, in between and not the worst films because I'm very um, interested in this subject. And uh, for me, uh, post-traumatic experience in the film is very interesting to watch. All the films can be characterized in the same way and that's why they are included in the in-between films. A lot of uh, people can be surprised that Elvis uh, is in my in-between films and not the best films. Uh, well, first of all, personally, I don't like biopics because uh, especially uh, biographies of people whose archival footage is already existent. So I'd rather watch uh, Elvis Presley himself than watch someone uh, performing and uh, portraying Elvis Presley. For me, um, it's very real that I like uh, biopics. Uh, for sure, um, Austin Butler is talented and uh, he portrayed um, Elvis very well, but um, for me, uh, there has to be something more to the film than just a talented actor portraying a well-known musician. I watched it in a cinema, I enjoyed it because I love Elvis Presley, but for me it is just um, an unnecessary film because, okay, we watched it, we had fun, uh, but was it necessary to make a portrait of Elvis Presley? Uh, 
well yes maybe but not this type of portrayal which is about the things that we already know and which um, tells us the same things that we already know so for me it was not groundbreaking if you are trying to portray someone and you are making a fiction or fictional documentary about them at least make it like um, I don't know um, Tammy Faye I really like Tammy Faye because um, in that biopic um, Tammy and uh, her husband was um, they were um, suggested as complex character while here Elvis is very I don't want to use the word victimized but it's just a uh, linear and one-sided portrayal so yes Austin Butler is good but for me it's not enough uh, to call the film the best of 2022 okay the next one is Glass Onion I have nothing to say about it it's for me an entertaining detective I love investigative uh, stories I love crime uh, fiction so it was a good one time watch can we talk about it uh, as something of an art house author cinema of course not so I would say like enjoy it with your friends with a glass of wine or cocktails and also, also you cannot just go wrong with the cast the cast is amazing uh, the next film is She Said. Now, um, I'm including She Said in the in-between um, films with the same logic as I included Elvis. I think it's um, a good film. I love uh, Carrie Mulligan in this film and I think it uh, is about uh, an important subject. But is it something we didn't know? Is it a, um, a significant cinematic experience? No. It's, uh, the same type of film is A Promising Young Woman. Now, uh, this is a very um, entertaining, I, I don't know how to <laughs> call it entertaining, but it's very um, addictive to watch because you just cannot take your eyes off Carrie Mulligan's acting. And she's so good in these two films. I have to say, I rediscovered her as an actor. Um, Promising Young Woman uh, also is uh, about important subjects. So as a woman, I had to include it in some type of list. And I think that it's a very, very good one-time watch, especially uh, if you have a boyfriend or a partner, it would be so fun to watch. Um, Luckiest Girl Alive films. She said Promising Young Woman and Luckiest Girl Alive. They are like a trilogy for me because they are about uh, young women who are judged, who are uh, mistreated, who are harassed and then uh, how they recover from their trauma, how they share their story. So I think all of them are very important. They cover different individual experiences and this is a very, very um, good thing uh, for one time watch. It's very intriguing, very entertaining and yeah, just um, and easy and you cannot go, go wrong with it because it's political, it's uh, sexual, uh, it's um, interesting, uh, it um, also looks good and yeah, it has everything like crime and everything. Uh, the other in-between film is The Good Nurse. Uh, well, The Good Nurse, I would say, is like a Netflix crime documentary, uh, but um, it's not documentary, it's fiction. Uh, so, I really love Jessica Chastain and I, and I will watch anything that she's in, but this film was also so many other films that I have watched about um, serial killers and uh, nurses uh, who kill so nothing very new but at the same time it's a good one time watch with your um, family or a uh, person who loves crime fiction uh, another film uh, actually a very um, different film in this list is Batman uh, now, a uh, Batman I also saw at the cinema and I have to say I enjoyed it. However, I have many problems with it. Um, not that the film has problems, but it's just me. I didn't find the film um, as good as I thought it would be. 
I am a massive fan of Batman uh, films, uh, especially um, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Nolan's um, The Dark Knight Rises, I think it's the best. So I was expecting uh, something that would challenge and um, not uh, something that would challenge other Batman films. I have to say that Robert Pattinson is really exceptionally good in it and uh, before I saw the Batman I thought that they would make Batman this punk rock uh, emo character, um, the idea of which I really liked, but in the execution the film is so dry and it's nothing more than Robert P Pattinson's charisma. I didn't like um, uh, Zoe Kravitz in Catwoman at all. Oh my god, what a drawback after Michelle Pfeiffer and Anne Hathaway. These are just my opinions. If you loved Batman, please don't be upset. But for me, I could not put it in the worst films because obviously it's not the worst. But uh, for me, um, when you are... Um, taking the responsibility of making Batman, which is already a massive hit, um, you should suggest and um, make a bit more out of it. The next film is To Leslie, now um, uh, an alcoholic woman and I really love the leading uh, actor, I like her, she's wonderful and um, it's just a very uh, heartbreaking and heartwarming story of an alcoholic person, what she deals with um, and how she uh, tries to get out of the rut when she's stuck. So it's a good one time watch, I have nothing to add, good cast, good story, nothing groundbreaking. Uh, another uh, film is um, which I um, actually was surprised that I even like for one time watch. It's a uh, deep water. Mm, well, um, I'm still unsure about Anna de Armas as an actor. I don't know whether she's hired because she's um, really beautiful and sexy, of course, but I don't know. Sometimes she's very good, sometimes she's um, just a bimbo acting um, actor. So I don't know. I, ha I still have to watch. Um, more that she will do in future. I already seen three and four films that she's in and I, I just cannot figure out uh, how I feel about uh, her in general. But Deep Water is a very good, um, also a crime-driven film, a fiction. It reminded me of a good girl, a Gone Girl, I'm sorry, Gone Girl, and I really like Gone Girl. So imagine something uh, like Gone Girl, but not that good. Uh, another thing, uh, another film is uh, Crimes of the Future. Now, I was this close to include Crimes of the Future in the best films, but the reason why I didn't include the best in the best films is that I'm unsure. Um, is this film strange because it tries to be strange and you know, when people watch strange things, they think that it's good because they don't understand it well. So people tend to uh, think that something is high art when they don't fully understand it. So rather than saying that I don't like it, I don't get it, people are like, oh, it must be so complicated and it deals with such a strange and uh, uh, inhuman uh, and meta-human things. So I just don't know this film really suggests um, something different and I think it's the most elevated and the best film in the in-between films for sure. But for me, I don't know, it just uh, it leans towards a creepier horror type of genre than something transcendental and a sort of cinema. And I just, my heart was, was not just fully in this film, although I love the casting, um, I get the idea and I appreciate what uh, Cronenberg does, but uh, yeah, I'm still unsure. However, I definitely encourage you to watch it if you can, but I have to warn, it's very graphic and very violent. 
Uh, and uh, the last but not least is the film that I expected to end up in the best films because everyone was talking about it at the Tbilisi International Film Festival. Everyone was recommended it to me. This film is Close. Uh, it's from Belgium. Uh, young heartbreak and uh, it's very touching and it's very sentimental but still it's not something new to me it is not eye-opening to me it's not uh, the thing when I watch and my heart says yes God so I just wanted and I, I included uh, the films in my best category that are just irreplaceable top of the top so this is something that uh, I would recommend uh, people to watch they wouldn't be disappointed if they watch it one time but yeah it's just um, another sentimental uh, inspiring and touching story so for me it lacks something and that's why I included it in, uh, in